Okay, we're inside Mass Update, and what we're going to be talking about today is page boxes. Now, we're getting a lot of, uh, you know, requests for, uh, you know, the developers or a web developer to go ahead and uh, explain to the public, the ones who use Mass Updater, you know, our consumer, how do you all make those, these awesome page boxes and, uh, you know, great page layout. And to give you an example, we'll look at... Uh, these page layouts or you know layouts for like let's say for your bios and stuff like that and how do you get these these different looks you know and how do you get it to to line up and to you know to look great uh, for the end user visiting um, the websites well within mass updater it's pretty easy it doesn't take much not much work or effort all you have to do basically is to know how the boxes are used and to know which boxes to use and you know from there you can make some really uh, nice and exciting layouts and the same thing will carry over to your pages as well so let's go ahead and get started let's start by uh, creating a nice new blank page in mass updater so we click our page button and we're going to hit the create page uh, uh, button here and we're gonna call this page boxes so that'll be our new page name so we're gonna make that a top tier so we'll click top tier and we'll hit submit we're only gonna create one page okay page is being created okay great now we can click on that page from within the uh, the uh, existing page list. Let's X out that and let's delete the text that's in there, which is Mass Updater 1.5. And let's go ahead, let's hit templates so we can choose our text layout templates. Okay. Here we'll choose text layout. Okay. And we have our divs and we have our tables over here. Now I'm going to go through the basics. Now, one of the most awesome things I discovered when, you know, using the, both the tables and divs divs are great because they don't add space when you drop them okay now tables do and let me go ahead and show you you know exactly what I'm talking about okay I'm gonna drop a table so there's a table right here okay I'm gonna make it bigger and I'm going to delete the space that's already in it now I'm going to drop another table inside of it okay and here we go now that table is dropped right inside of it now we'll expand that out and let's also delete the spaces inside that now let's bring it on over and I'm going to show you something if we try and move this one up from the bottom it won't go up that space will not disappear okay move it down all you want the space won't disappear that's tables okay now let's go ahead and drop some divs here's a div Okay. You have to double click a div in order to access the interior. Let's delete the interior information and let's drop another div. Okay? And we'll do the same thing with that div. Delete the interior information. Now we're going to make this div just a little bit smaller than the other one. And we're going to click on it and we're going to drag it and drop it inside the other div. Now, let's go ahead. We'll make this one right here a little bit smaller than the other one. Okay, bring the, that up. Okay, and let's give a little bit of space between the div and the table. Okay, one space I'll do. Now, let's go ahead and spread out the div. Now you see that? No extra space at the bottom. That's one of the big differences between divs and tables. And that's why you want to use a combination of tables and divs okay so that is the first basics when it comes to tables and divs and creating boxes so now you know the basic difference one click you can access the interior of a table two clicks you can access the interior of the div and divs do not leave extra spaces where tables will leave one extra space so basically the more tables you have on the interior you will always get more and more spaces.
use the div the same way and you drop that in the interior of itself with a little bit of drag and you bring it down you will not get a space so when creating page boxes you want to use a combination of tables and divs or you know use divs as much as you can before the text overrides and starts to you know go over and um, overlap images or something like that that you don't want to overlap so keep that in mind that was just the basics okay so let's move on part two